Welcome to the game, everybody. How's everybody's day going? Uh, rushing around like a madman, because, as per usual, I was not prepped for today at all, and I still have absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on. Um, but with that, who would like to try and give us a, a, a rundown of where we're at and what was happening, what's going on here? Because I don't even fucking remember. That's a uh, fun way to put it, I guess. God damn. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, that's right. You guys had uh, lost the battle at Rock Guard Garrison. The undead army pushed through. Uh, I believe several of you had died. In fact, all of you had died. Uh, although Wabu was brought back as... Oh, right, right. Sulamine ran. Yeah. Um, but uh, upon meeting back up, you guys made it to Grimgallier. Uh, at which point, you guys now have resurrected or reincarnated. Ash is now a dwarf, and it looks like Spoonbreaker is a Herongon. So, um... Anybody remember exactly the moment we left off? Are you guys heading out? Like, leaving? It has been a month, so... I'm not quite sure what the fuck was going on. Right, right. Anybody? Anybody remember uh, if you guys were on your way out? Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, our note-taker's the one dude who who's not here. He's, he's, uh, he was in Italy. He got back today, but four hours ago he said he was, like, falling asleep. I mean, they, uh... But uh, two two weeks on a time zone that's I believe six hours ahead of us I think. Right, right, yeah. So it's probably good uh, six or seven hours ahead of us in Italy. <clears throat> well. Yeah. Yeah, at uh at uh sixty percent interest a day, uh loan shark souvenir. <laughs> Glad you mentioned that. Um No, not right now. Um I'm gonna say Phineas was heading with you guys out of this. Uh, as you guys walk through the city, um, back towards the exit, or the entrance, the hole in the wall that goes both ways, um, oh, Finny, fuck was the, man, I am so unprepared. No, no, um. No, the Underbaron's second in command, the one that knocked him out. Uh, should I make a stop block for him? I don't fit. Okay, listen here. Um, Galatus, that's his name. Phineas should. Galatus. Galatus, he is the, uh, 
he's the the dwarf, the second in command of uh of Grimgallier. Galatus? No, that was Marshal Valius. Uh he was from Rockguard Garrison. Yeah. Uh that's that's uh um, but as you guys are heading through the city, you notice that there seem to be a lot of people up. Um, people are packing their belongings. Uh, wives and children are hugging and kissing their loved ones goodbye. As many people throughout the streets uh, seem to be donning armor and shields. Looks like they're pre uh, preparing for war. Uh, Gelatus happens to mention uh, so, something that the Underbaron didn't mention to you. We're heading out to back up our Centrum. They've already made it into the main area of Gundelian Empire. And while you guys go in search of your artifacts, we're going to hold back the, the undead army as best we can. It's a suicide mission, but hopefully it'll buy you time. Stop whatever's coming. I um at this point you see him look over and uh see um a woman screaming at a man holding a child by the hand. Uh I I should probably go take care of this. Not everybody is uh keen about their loved ones going on a suicide mission. Says good luck to you, Stormforged. He walks off. You guys make it through the city and you get to the exterior. Even from outside, um, are, are, are you guys hopping on your griffins to uh, make your travels? Guys didn't resurrect them. Hmm. That is true. Um, sorry, go ahead. I was just about to say there was another option, but he already, he already picked up on it. You are not sure the exact uh, place, but you know it is to the southeast. Uh, whenever you step out aside into the open, you can see a large beam of light uh, that you guys have learned leads you to your next artifact. It is not. Now it is. It is pretty far to the. Uh, Southeast.
Sorry, my mic was muted. I said yes. Uh, what kind of arrows are you looking for? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, these are... Steve, do you still have that <laughs> handout for arrows? You might, but I've got too- I, I've got too much to actually fucking- So, um, you guys are doubling up. Who, who's, who's Griffins are dead? So, Ashes is dead. I thought it was Sleet that was out uh, in the battlefield ground. Was it Razor Talon? Man, y'all didn't even take notes on when your fucking griffins died. At least take notes about your pets, man. <laughs> I know you did. I, I know you know yours isn't dead, but I know there was two out there. I can't remember if it was Razor Talon or Sleet. Ash knows hers is dead. Oh, come on now. Alright, um, I'm gonna say it's Razor Talon. So, Ash needs a ride. True. Hard. Um, yeah, so you guys, uh, hop on Griffin. Uh, Ash, Ultra was too big to get into bag of whole body. Except for Vault, she died. It has to be alive to be pulled in. You know what, um, I'll allow it. I'll allow it to be pulled in. Yeah, well, well, basically we'll say uh, how that works. Your your griffins are like a two flask. Uh, although I guess two. Okay. Anyways, it's in the flask. You guys hop on the griffin, and as you take off into the skies, um, you can see... A massive column of undead. Probably hundreds of thousands. Marching. Towards what's correct center. Clouds seem to follow this column. Protecting them from the sun. You estimate that... Let's uh, see how far this...
fifty color. You estimate that the column will reach Blumenthal. <clears throat> and let's see, it's roughly 150 miles. Uh most uh most of them have to rest. So miles a day. Double that. Say a hundred a day. <clears throat> wow. Um you have about, uh, they'll have to have a little break. So you, you guys would estimate that it will take them probably two, maybe two and a half days to Blumenthal. And within one or two days after that, uh, they would easily get through Rex Centrum. Taking out the capital of the Dundelian Empire and one of the biggest cities um, to exist on this continent. You're, you're, what, are you going to Blumenthal? I thought you guys were going southeast. Um, let's... You guys are... Yeah, it's it's going to take about a day and a half for them to reach Blumenthal and probably two and a half days uh, to hit Ruck Centrum. Mm -mm. No, you guys, you guys get about, because you're in flight, you guys get about 50 miles a day. Um, and where you are going, I don't know the exact distance. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to take you about 10 days. Even on flight. So as you float in the sky, you guys realize you have two choices. You go for your artifacts, which you guys are not aware exactly where it is. You can see the beam. Southeast. The actual location is not known to you as of yet. Or try and back up Blumenthal and Rex Centrum. Those are currently your options. And Yeah, if it, if it turns into another TBK, I will definitely say that is going to end, though. There's no coming back from that. Uh, there's only three artifact pieces. You guys already got your second one from the vault. Rockard Garrison. Rock guard. I'm not shocked. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't done it yet. Uh huh. So, um, so you guys are heading southeast, or do you want to back them up? Uh, he gave you the handout, yeah?
Well, you're in the middle of a war. Oh, it's not in there is what you're saying. Okay. Uh what what is the current price? Hand out. Three. For plus ones? Probably easily get about well sixty. So, as you guys begin to head south, you see that there's still roaming groups of undead wandering areas. Um, the fires have, have ravaged much of the land. Um, what hasn't been ravaged by fire has been ravaged by um, necrotic energies and magics. The land is dead, rotted or burnt. You see next to no signs of life whatsoever on your travels. <clears throat> is there anything you all wish to do during the first day? Not really, no. <clears throat> Is there nothing anybody wishes to do? And what would those be? I would love to hear that. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so I'm going to get everybody to give me a intelligence check, please. Wow. Oh my god, dude. Uh-huh. Boonbreaker? Intelligence check, please? There you go. Uh, I mean, yeah, your your saves are the same as your checks, right? Nobody's checked in with um your followers in a couple days, and nobody's warned them, I don't think, anyways about the army coming. At Blumenthal. Nope. Yeah, you're the one who took it. Not everything. Is it in your inventory? I told you, he didn't want to completely cripple you. It wouldn't be any fun.
All right, well, um, sorry, my uh, my Bailey's apparently hit pretty hard. So while well, you guys discuss that, I, I have to run. I'll BRB. Well, that sure is an interesting message.
And uh, what, uh, where is it? Where are you t uh, telling them to go, by the way? And is that the whole message? Oh, and by the way, the password, password, everybody, is, no, you guys chose it. It's, it's, I put it in a handout uh, with your mansion uh, feature. Mansion notes and abilities under item handouts. Um, you guys get a message back almost immediately. It's, uh, not Sakura, though. Yet, a very familiar voice. On the other end, seems to be Spoonbreaker's follower. Tits to snarl. It's funny you mention that. We're already past that. We'll see you all soon. I look forward to it. End of message. That's all the message said. <laughs> well, it wasn't Sakura. It was uh, the male drow that is Doombreaker's follower. That kind of strikes you as a little strange. You've never heard her give that to anybody else before. It's funny you should mention that. We are already past that. See you soon. I look forward to it. You all can give me an insight. Ash and Phoenix, you both hear the voice. It does sound like Spoonbreaker's follower, but you feel like something's wrong. Realization that uh, they might be already dead or something horrible has happened uh, kind of fills you guys with a uh, feeling of, of dread. Now they said they were already past the dash. You want to continue on your path or would you like to try to find them?
Okay. Guys can Over the course of 10 days, it takes you to get to where you need to go. So let me move the calendar since our calendar mover isn't here either. We are in concept. Sender. Under which can't read that. No, it's near the end of the month, near the end of the week. That means there's now the number has changed at the stroke of midnight every night as you guys have made. It now reads 48. <laughs> but as uh, you get near to the, the beam of light, you take rest in the last set of mountains, hiding in a cave. Uh, most of the cities in the area have been burnt or destroyed. However, New Haxon, like it is still standing, although parts of it are on fire. You guys can see it in the distance. In New Haxon. Uh, not really. Though you can see it looks like there are people of some sort standing guard on the walls. Go on. It looks like for the most part it is empty. When would you guys like to approach this? How? At what time of day? Uh, well, I'm going to say you camped out at uh, night, so uh, you guys can probably see what little lights there are uh, just before dawn. So we'll say it's about dawn. 48 days to go. About 6 a.m. A few people you do standing um, up on walls. Um, when they turn, sometimes you can see a shine in their eyes. Something that human eyes, or for halfling elves, don't really. Do. However, um, you'd have to get closer to learn anything else. Or something else. Who knows? Well, it's going to take you uh, several hours to get from where you are to, to there. And if you guys are flying in... I mean, Pass Without a Trace isn't going to do shit. Uh, it'll keep the, the sound of the wing beats down, but 
if it's during the day, anybody who looks up is going to fucking see you. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what level are you? Don't you have unlimited at this point, or is that next level? Uh, I think it's, uh, is it 18 or 20 get uh, unlimited? You No. guys level up after you got your items did you not game oh yeah i think i think it's at level 18 druids get um unlimited wild shape use so day or night infiltration guys um you guys would probably be able to leave like uh, about dusk and uh wait, fish and about dusk will probably put you uh at the city in probably about 2 a.m I mean, uh, darkness is the undead's, you know, home terror. All 
I mean, if you guys want to change your name, I haven't actually left yet. This is planning phase. Um, some are. Oh, this so far from your battles with them, especially since you are aware that there's literally uh, massive clouds that are following that column, keeping them protected from the sun. Obviously, there's got to be at least a, a lot of them that have some weakness in sunlight, whether it be vision or, or strength, or whether the sun might actually hurt them. We'll say that uh, you guys wake up a little early, a little bit early. Say that the fire in the sky says, you "Guys have formulated your plan," and you begin to head off. Sun begins to rise. For you, it's blinding. Today is a rather sunny day. The only clouds in the sky have been formed by smoke from burning the area. Ash, the only thing falling. You guys head in. <laughs> really? You guys head towards the city. Uh, you land a little shy of the city. You guys put your To Did you get near the wall. Sorry, I don't have a map for this, by the way. You notice that the only creatures that's out and about along the walls are mostly skeletons. Their bones bleached, fun. Most of them, uh, arrows in, uh, bows and arrows in hand, or crossbows. Uh, many of them do have a blade that seems to be sitting in their ribs, ready on. You get to the south side, and you guys can see that, uh, you guys are on the south side of this. The beam of light, definitely coming from inside this, somewhere to the north of you. How would you like to enter this? Not what I'm asking. You know it. Uh, they seem to be about 30 feet. Uh, in the center of the city, you can see what looks to be a large um, castle-like structure. Uh, stone of the, of the walls and itself is mostly a, a round, much like the mountains of the, the west. Castle has several pin, um, pinnacles. Um, all seem to be very tall, needle-like tappings, the towers, areas of the castle.
I fucking hate dwarves. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I was built about, uh, wait, can you, uh, don't work. Uh, this was once mostly a, um, goblinoid city. Um, much of the, the work is not great, um, especially the wall. However, uh, over the couple centuries since it was built, has been reinforced and made more sturdy as even the goblins, bugbears and hobgoblins who built it eventually um, learned more about stone cutting and, and crafting. Make it stronger. Well, there is a port side. Um, the the wall basically runs from the southern point. <clears throat> sorry, the um, a little a little bit of the southern point, um, the west, and then the north, and then back down to the actual port. You can see the corner of the uh, corner of the place right there. That is basically the port side. <clears throat> Uh, most of uh, the, the city, the way it was built, uh, you can definitely tell it's on a slight angle. Um, the upward side of the, uh, the curvature is to the west so that it can drain out into the harbor. Well, Sulamine already made a, an option for that, mentioned it. Um, uh, I mean, what he's talking about is a spell. Wish to explain that to them again. So uh, there's a gate, a couple of gates uh, around the uh, around the walls. But if you're looking for, are you looking for like secret entrance and exits? What, what does it mean? No, not really. Um, it would take you some time if you wanted to, like, kind of go slowly along the wall and find some sort of a, uh, like, kind of a, a secret exit. Is that what you guys want to do? Guys, make your way around this. Uh, I am going to warn you, this will take you about three hours of trying to get us uh, slowly around without getting noticed. Cause we'll have to get past, like, you know, the, the closed gates with guards on top. So to do that, take you a fair amount of time. As you guys slowly make your way around, uh, who is checking the walls? That's investigation. Sure. 
advantage. Investigate. You guys spend about three hours, and you end up on the more northern side. Um, you were able to manage to kind of slip past gates and, and such with uh, without getting noticed. Um, but after three hours of searching, Jesus Christ, boom. Uh, after about three hours of searching, you unfortunately have not found a any kind of a secret side exit entrance. Uh, so at this point, uh, it is about 9.30 in the morning, and you are on the, now the northern side place. Oh, the beam of light is now to your south. Oh, no, you, you guys failed uh, the investigation. There's no more finding a secret exit. It, it's it's one, one check for... Thing. Yep. That's why I was a little surprised when she was like, the dwarf should do it. <laughs> okay, okay. Stone Cunning gives you the uh, the history. It does It does not, uh, not mean you're going to be able to find secret entrances. The sexual harassment in this group, I swear to God. Oh. Anyways. Um, next idea? So you pop in a wild shape. I mean, you're right near the water. So it would be pretty normal. All right. As you fly up into the sky, you realize that... Uh, Even though you're near water, you haven't heard any. In fact, you've seen no life at all. Fly up. Going over the wall. Yeah, as you get up to the top of the wall and you start to head over, um, being in the daylight, you don't see much of anything. There, There's a couple skeletons, but they don't really pay you any mind. Um, entire city tells them. Bodies strewn around the alleys. Rot in the sun. Even the rats seem to be non existent. You dip over the wall and just do a, a slight scouting. You notice that there are some buildings where they're nearly untouched. The Shutters and doors and windows, they are all closed. And not necessarily locked up tight, but 
it looks like they've been made so no sunlight can get in. But then there's other houses where doors have been ripped off their hinges, uh, shutters hang tattered, uh, glasses broken. Lots of sunlight can get in. How far around the city are you going, sir? See that the um, beam of light be coming from not the castle itself, but it seems to be leading into the ground through the stone of the stone near the castle. But what you do not see, what are you walking? The Other than the skeletons, at first you hear nothing, and you hear screaming from near the port area. You hear the laughter, deep and echoey. Yes. Scream <laughs> it makes your flesh taste more delicious and quickly the screaming stops screeches go up all around the city you don't see anybody but a lot of the scream here and the laughters the way they're echoing through the streets makes it sound like they're probably inside some many different places all over the city. Until suddenly something comes running around the corner, chasing a small girl, filthy, bloody. The creature is about 13 feet tall be playing with the child runs it takes two strides to catch up laughs as it stops waits a moment and then speeds towards her again it carries on as you sit on a perch are you going to intervene As you're about to lift off, he says, It has been fun, child. This large creature seemingly made of bone. Its tail suddenly whips out the side like a stinger and pierces this child through the back, protruding out of the chest. As her body goes into shock, lift it up. This creature uses its large eight inch claws on each finger to dig into their upper chest and the waist and immediately rip this body apart spraying, spraying the alley in blood and intestine and organs you head back to the waiting for you on the other side of the wall you notice now that a uh, more skeletons have appeared, walking the wall, keeping an eye out, or an eye socket out, if you will. In fact, as you go over the wall, you notice that two of them are on top of the wall, right above where your allies are. This time, Skeleton takes notice of you. Actually. Actually. Perception check. Skeleton. The 
I find a regular spells in stat block and not one I've modified to be life alter. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it turns towards you as you go over the wall. It points. This skeleton's wearing more armor. However, the other skeleton, as you dip over the wall, and do you go right back to your allies, or do you continue on over the wall for a while? Go right back to your allies? Oh, he, he notices the skeleton noticed. That's why I'm asking. But yeah, I, I said you, you noticed the other skeleton. I, I wouldn't tell you what the skeleton is doing if you didn't. As the skeleton raises his, uh, his bow, he shoots. He misses. Three arrows as you weave and bob out further. Until you are out of range. Those of you still, uh, holding against the wall, and hear the arrow shots and see them shooting at the seal. But eventually it stops. And out of nowhere, you guys hear what sounds like bone on bone. And a skeleton flies off the wall, landing in front of you, and breaks in several pieces. After a few moments uh, of not getting shot at Wabu, I it might be safe to uh, head back to your allies. Get back, Wabu. Gain your seagull form. May tell them what you saw. As Wabu whispers to you, um, you can hear one of the skeleton above begin to walk away. Uh, by the way, way Wabu, damn. Uh, you also saw. Probably in a, probably about the 80 foot section of wall, uh, which you guys are in the middle of, you only saw about uh, four uh, <clears throat> skeleton, including the one that was uh, more heavily armored uh, with a great sword on his back. Seems that uh, since they have been taking their their army inland uh, seems they've left the outer and rather unacted. <clears throat> what would you all like to do?
friends. You can make friends with him. Yeah, post that spell for me. It sounds familiar, but I don't know what it does. Okay, so basically you want the uh, the extra mental space is going along or like above the wall and then you guys kind of like grab it, rope pulls you guys up and you guys just hop off the rope. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was saying. Yeah, because because uh, like the the extra dimensional space, it's 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 not like you could, you know, you just pop out on the other side. The extra dimensional space is its own basically plane of existence. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Sure. So he he lays out this rope, and uh, you can all grab a piece and hold on tightly, and he begins to cast a spell. Rope suddenly stiffens and starts rising up. Um, as you guys, as you guys hold on, uh, it lifts you up, and uh, you guys can see almost like a very small hole in space time above you. It's almost unnoticeable, but it has a shimmer. To it. And as you guys get up there, um. You guys are able to kick one foot out and send yourself to land on the uh, edge of the wall. As you do this, I would like you all to roll me a d20, please. And you all want evens. Wow. As the first one lands on the edge of the wall, an arrow shoots, clatters against the rock. Six skeletons, being the one with a great sword, charge at you. And I'll roll me. Oh shit, sorry, I should open turn. Alright, everybody but Wabu and Spoonbreaker roll. I'll add you guys in automatically. Hum on my nuts, Chief. Fucking Chief Keef over here. All right, let's. All right, I need to add in. All right, everybody who hasn't dragged out your uh, token yet, please place it here. That's fine. I'll uh, I'll fix. It. And who's controlling Richter?
Jimmy Cat, you may uh, roll Richter. Uh, I believe. <laughs> I believe you were the one uh, that got controlled. All of them? Are you not? Uh. Oh. Oh, who the fuck? Oh, Sulamine. Sulamine, you're you're the one with uh, control. Like on this token woman. All right, so we got Spook Breaker with 17. God damn it. Got Wabu in there now. All right, and then we're just but it's going at the bottom. So, um, first several. Uh, you, there's only like two in the real, real near vicinity. Um, there is um, the one with the great sword, uh, which is more armored, and then two that are within shooting distance. There is another uh, four nearby. Phoenix, I would like you a perception. Yeah, I don't have a map for anything for tonight except once you guys actually get artifacts are. Um, 20. You notice that there is uh, one of them that seems to be running towards a bell. Guard houses along the tower. Or along the uh, the wall. He is roughly 60 feet to the east. You have one archer closing in on the west. There's one archer closing in on the east. Uh, they are both about 30 feet away from where you guys hopped up the wall. And there is more heavily armored skeleton, great sword, rushing towards you. Uh, right now, he is currently about 15 feet here deep. Not really. This is going to be super quick, honestly. Um, I doubt they're going to live beyond uh, for the first round. No, I'm just going to keep track. It, it's it's going to be a super quick combat. Uh, 60 feet to the east. Um, he's, uh, the bell is about another 15 feet away from him. He's rushing towards it, but they are at the bottom of the... Uh, you do have two on the way to him. you wish to stop and swing, or are you trying to uh, get around them?
All right, let me do it this way. I'll, I'll do a little makeshifting here. And all right, bring out the skeletons. Fox did not give me a regular monster. Okay. Whoops. Oh, there's the skeleton. Haha, <laughs> found him. Very large, though. So there are two. Uh, the one on the east is this one. Or no, sorry, uh, this one. And the one on the west is this one. What's your movement speed? Uh, I assume you're using your bonus action to dash. Okay, yeah. Uh, you rush to the other side, and... Describe? Yeah, the rest of the body collapses to the ground as his head rolls. Um, you are going to take one opportunity of attack of opportunity, though. Not that he's going to hit you. Misses. Dylan's got a bow out, so he can't really do much about that. Yep. I take it that's it. Wabu. I uh, may want to remind you, though, that uh, to be careful because, I mean, right now you're trying to make them not. Crazy alarm. So, 
careful with uh, spells or something, it might cause a lot of noise. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you want to spend a minute casting it, by all means. See what happens. Wild. Uh, there, and I said him, so from you, that's about 80 feet. Oh, okay. Uh, Ash? Uh, this one is about 40 feet. Or, sorry, uh, actually, they're both about 40 feet. One is just, you'd have to go on an angle. About, uh, about 40 feet. Uh, sorry, you know what? These ones would be about 35, and this one would be about 40. Um, don't you get more movement speed as a barbarian, or is that only a certain type of barbarian? Been in like two years, Ash. Come on, you know your character. I mean, I, I guess it's been six months now. Yeah, but your barbarian abilities didn't change. And that's all barbarians, it's not just, um. Yeah, fast movement. Starting at 5th level, your speed increases by 10 feet. Uh, when you aren't wearing heavy armor. Not. Go up again. Okay, so 35 feet off the hop. Yeah, describe. Yeah, the the head separates and the uh, body falls over the wall to the outside. You mean 26 to hit? Yep. Yep, sure does. Do you mean? The hell is Spoonbreaker? 
you're 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 up after Sulamine, but where's your character? Did you not bring it out when I said bring your characters out? Weird. Christ. Uh, a nat one misses. Sure. And that's this one. That is six. They're immune. So acid, five acid. Oh, uh, just enough. Half here. Just enough. You want to describe uh, what you do to this one? All right. Have three attacks? Oh, you got one as bonus action, don't you? Oh, right, right, right. And that one is a crit. Uh, this one does not go down, however. I said he's heavily armored. He's not a regular. Thank you. <laughs> Holy fuck. Improv, baby. Hey, man, I said brownstone, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. Five hit. Boombreaker, you are up. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the point of the the two and cash hit two targets with a single target spell. Uh, you gotta make two attacks, but it only takes one spell slot. Okay, and you cast it at what level? Okay, so that's your first one. Your other attack. Yeah, you hit both. Um, the left one um, immediately crumbles. The other one is continuing to run. Straight forward. Um, but you do hit him. His, uh, his armor crackles with energy. Um, you see scorch marks start to appear on the bones that you can see. And uh, the armor... Kind of turns a um a chromatic or sorry not chromatic um word yeah sure chromatic I guess you know the look of gasoline and water <clears throat> but he is still up and charging Richter or Sulamine controlling Richter.
That is a miss. Uh, well, Phoenix passed by this guy, and the one who's hit him has been Boombreaker. Charge Zinnies. Twenty six, nineteen, twenty two to hit. Nineteen, twenty two, don't hit. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, take twelve slashing as he manages to hit you with the first strike. He makes two more, and you manage to use your uh, your new. Um, Heron gone dexterity to dodge his other two attacks. I just... Phoenix, it's your turn. My grandma was like, why do you need to go to the booze store before you play this game? I don't know, Nan. I just, I need some alcohol. Go ahead, Phoenix. Yeah, you charge up behind this guy. That's a hit. That's a hit. It's, uh, 20... Oh, bludgeoning, huh? Give me a second. Okay, so we double bludgeoning. That's, uh, 46. And 14 is 60. Uh, and yes, uh, as you pummel this thing, um, you hit like vital points of what would be uh, a fine and you can hear the, it cracking and with each blow it, uh, you know, it drops to one knee and then the other. Um, and with a final, uh, I don't know, jumping, spinning kick, then the helmed head flying. 30 feet off the wall. For now, it seems like nobody managed to hear combat. Below you on this side of the wall, uh, 30 feet down, the ground, you do hear uh, much uh, turmoil um, echoing throughout the city but it doesn't seem like anything is necessarily near you right now uh, yes Okay. Now the buildings, um, though many of them are not tall, um, there are some. You're still able to see the beach towards the center of the town, near to uh, the castle. You guys proceed to the city. There happens to be one building. As you're all walking. Your elf eyes, Bulamine, pick up glinting of something flashing light your way from an upward, uh, upper window. Of a uh, four story building. The shutter where it seems to be coming from is mostly closed over, like it's open slightly.
Now, it looks like this place is a, a, a few streets away. Off to the side. There's definitely a few open sections. To be clear, when I say it's like something printing a light in your direction, I don't mean like it's not like a spotlight. Um, similar, however. Um, what is your background again? And you are. Rogue Ranger? History and at advantage. You are not sure whether this is, uh, Somebody trying to spy on you? Or somebody's trying to get your attention? Now, you haven't heard any alarm go up. And if it was a spy glass and somebody's more than likely some sort of alarm would have gone off. But being a rogue, uh, this is something you probably would have done in the past or done. You're, you're you're talking about like pin uh, pincering the building, like flanking. Like, hey, we're gonna go check that light out. You guys go find the vault and hopefully make it out alive. Okay, so as you guys make your way through the, the alleys of this city, um, still hearing uh, shouts of pain or agony um, here and there, sporadically in the distance, you guys make your way to the building. Um, it looks dilapidated. The bottom floors, it seems like the one door that is, uh, the front door seems to, slightly on its hinges although it looks like it could easily fall off um the windows are have been broken the, the shutters are hanging off except on the third and fourth floor it those windows and shutters seem to be locked up uh, shut pretty tightly except for the one uh you no longer see the flashing coming from the upper window is uh, the shutter has now been shut. Uh, who is on the left side of it, of uh, the building, and who's on the right? All right.
Sulamine. <laughs> so you guys flanked the building. Um, what are you guys doing? Now the front door, like I said, it uh, it doesn't look very sturdy, but uh, it is open. Um, windows uh, on the sides. As you guys look in, you can see that uh, the place has definitely been ransacked. Um, there are some bodies strewn about. Matter of fact, there is. Okay, so you kind of get a running start, uh, and you, you rush up, and you kind of, like, leap off the building and put your hands on the windowsill, and using your claws, hold it up, hold yourself up, and just kind of peek in around you. Uh, second floor, just like the first, seems to have been ransacked. Um, the dust on the floor doesn't really show much travel. However, uh, on a little more inspection, um, without going in, you can see that there are a full set of footprints in the dust along the floor. All right, so you, you uh, kind of lift yourself over and in. Uh, the rest of you who are outside, what are you doing? I believe bust in and quietly do not go in the same sentence, so you gotta pick one or the other. Okay. As the other four of you are um, outside, I would like... Oh, Stulamine, I guess, is also going in. Wabu, Richter, and Spoonbreaker, you guys can all give me perceptions. Spoonbreaker, hear it. Richter. All gravy. By the way, homemade iced coffee with Bailey's and fucking coffee whiskey liqueur. Fucking amazing. Once you get past that first, unless uh, as, as soon as you get past that first, like, you know, run to the bathroom. Then it's delicious. Diabetic. I shouldn't even be drinking this. It's so heavy on the cream. It's ridiculous. But it's so good. Uh, <laughs> a wheat drink? Oh. Rob's definitely not going to pass out at the end of this. <laughs> Smart. Uh, and Richter, you hear it. Wabu, uh, you not. You and your oblivious self. What sounds like bone claws creeping quickly on the stone seems to be getting closer. Yeah, sure. 
Babu, you unfortunately don't hear it, but seeing that uh, the other two of your allies that are on that side have gone in, what would you like to do? Okay. Babu, since you are the... Uh, yeah, how are you getting in? Are you trying to, like, get in through a window, or are you running around the front to the... Or, or I guess, walking around the front to the door? Well, Phoenix went up to the second floor window. Um, Zulamine, did you go in the front door, or did you go uh, through a window on the side of the first floor? He would go in through the window. I was waiting to see, uh, you know, which, which way he went, wanted to try and enter. How many uses of wild shape do you have a day? Is it two? I don't think you get extra until level 18 or 20. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's 18 or 20. Uh, it would be a... Uh, it, it won't be in your wild shape, I don't think. It'll tell you at... Uh... Let's see. Well, it's level 20. Uh, Arch Druid. I love it. 20th level, you can use your wild shape an un unlimited number of times. Additionally, you can ignore the verbal and somatic components of your druid spells, as well as any material components that lack a cost and aren't consumed by a spell. Oh, you gain this benefit in both your normal shape and your shape. So, Wabu, I want you to roll me a d20. You want evens? What did you turn into, Wabu? Turn into a squir squirrel. You leap onto the windowsill. And as you go in, suddenly now you hear of bony claws on the stone. Here. Ah! Food! As he charges, uh, he makes his attack. As you leap in the window. Fifteen against Squirrel AC, pretty sure that hits. You guys see Wabu uh leap into the window, and as he does, uh a large claw slashes at him. Uh it pierces through his squirrel form. And before he hits the ground, he morphs back into himself, slamming it to the ground. Everybody roll initiative. Oh, wait, let me open the turn order. All right, roll your initiative. Oh, not bad. Holy shit, man. God damn, look at those initiatives. Got it. You guys watch as, as Wabu suddenly morphs back to himself, looting, uh, how much does HP did a squirrel have? One? So then you've got uh, 
11 off your normal health. And it suddenly sticks its large head into the window. Ah. Oh, playthings. It begins to make its way to the front door. Uh, Spoonbreaker, you are up first. Phoenix is on the second floor. Uh, give you some perspective about this uh this building. It is about thirty feet on a side. <laughs> um and it's about twenty feet high ceiling. Uh, Phoenix, the stairs down to the first floor, uh, as I'm sure you would have heard the voice where you are just inside the window. Uh, the stairs down to the first floor, uh, it's about 20 feet to get to the bottom, and the stairs are about 5 feet away from you. So when your turn comes around, you can... I'm going to draw a quick thing here. You know what? Oh, we're gonna do it. Perfect. Uh oop. All right, so Phoenix, you're at the top of the stairs. Um, one near the uh, closer to the center of the room is the um, bottom. Let's see. It will mean you got in there. Wabu hit the ground about here. And the window. I will mark is here that's the front door that's another window as you would rush through the front door Richter and Spoonbreaker both went in through the window. All right. Uh, Spoonbreaker, you cast haste on yourself and Ash. Anything else? Uh, he hasn't. No, no. He, he was rushing around to the door. But initi initiative started as soon as he made his attack on Wabu. So basically, he, he just got to the side of the wall, or like he got past the window, and that's where we start initiative. Anything else, Boombreaker? You cannot see him. He's on the other side of the war, other side of the wall. This is true. You can hold actions. It just takes your reaction. So, like, uh, to do it, you won't have a reaction until your next turn comes around. No. Not until he comes through the door and you set out your attack off. Oh, I will. That was a very high roll. I'm definitely going to ignore that. <laughs> I, I mean, it literally cannot... It almost cannot be any higher. Uh, Ash.
Oh, okay. Um, no. But this thing is also quite large. So I'm uh, honestly like uh, player knowledge. Um, he'd still be able to get a shot off without any um. Uh, without this thing having cover from, from Ash. Yes. Yeah, Ash has literally halved her size. <laughs> In reality, she like a saloon door, you know, that, that only goes up to the waist. You know, you just push through it. Um, so Ash, you're you're what, holding an action? All right. Sulamin. Sure. Uh. Yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. Probably because I selected it. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that's why I love you, man. You're entertaining. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, let's... What is he? Hit. 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 God damn, let's... Alright, uh, 1d8 of what type of damage? Okay. Holy fuck. <laughs> God damn, dude. What what is that third third attack coming from, by the way? Oh, uh Red Ambusher, uh, start of your first turn each combat, your walking speed is increased by 10 feet, which lasts till the end of that turn. If you attack, take attack action, you get one additional attack as part of the, that action. If that target, uh, the attack hits, target takes one extra D8. Yep. Oh, it works. Yep.
Uh, you definitely hit. You definitely did some damage. Um, but uh, is that it for your turn, sir? Richter. I'm Vortex. Just so you're aware, if it doesn't go off, it does burn the plot, right? Okay. And I take it the effect is uh, when it uh, tries to enter the room. All right. rushes around to the uh, front of the door. And as it goes to enter, it slams the wall, cracking uh, the wood as it enters. Ash, you held your action first. Or no, sorry, uh, Spoonbreaker, you held your action first. You go off. Really shouldn't have said it's going to be higher. Shame. What level did you cast that at? Ouch. Uh, as it goes to bust through the door, uh, cracking door frame. <laughs> oh, so many playthings. Uh, it it kind of moves its head to the cocks it to the side, and your chromatic orb shoots straight out. Um, missing it, uh, hitting the building behind. Ash, uh, I believe you were the next one holding an action. Nope, just one. I mean, he has a pelvis, but he is literally made of bone. So, <laughs> sure, try and give it a bite. Uh, yeah, you you bring your um your hammer or your sorry your maul straight up. Uh, you do manage to hit him uh in the pelvis, and some of the bone cracks. Ugh! Let's see. That block. Budgeting. Okay, so. Uh, as some of it, uh, some of the bone begins to crack. Um, makes you believe that this thing might uh, be vulnerable to bludgeoning damage. So, that is. Four and nine. He is still standing, though. Uh, so I believe it was Richter is sending his uh, spell off next. Uh, is there a save for it for? Not look like it. Oh wait. Point ten foot radius. I turn on point within range. Wisdom saving throw. I just close this fucking stop lock.
Open sesame. I said open sesame. Oh, it's off screen. That's right. Yeah. Uh, with. What is. Oh, spell save 22 just barely fails. Roll me for your effect. The D10 5 is. Creature is stunned until the start of its next turn. Hey. Uh, and his turn already started, so he is stunned for a full round. Wow, didn't even get an attack off. Wabu, you're up. Uh, each the building is thirty feet on a side. I would say that you are probably about halfway into the room, so fifteen feet to the door. He's like a, he's in the door frame, so about fifteen, sixteen feet. Uh huh. Yes. Um it, it basically stops right before Ash. The ten foot radius, they probably would have cast it like right back here, so it, it kind of basically goes right up to the door frame. Yes, uh, the entrance to the stairs is here. And then it is 20 feet to get to the top of the stairs. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you have your movement, that means you got 15 plus dash is another 30. So from where you are, uh, you can get to the top. Uh, five feet from the stairs is Phoenix. So you can basically uh, stand in front of Phoenix or you can go to the... Uh, five feet to the left. <coughs> okay. Wabu's saving his uh, spell slots for heals later. Smart. Very, very smart. I like it. Phoenix. Definitely hear the cracking of wood from downstairs, and you saw Wabu rush up uh, with a... a, a a little bit of a wound. But you, you definitely see him rushing up the stairs. Probably a little wide-eyed. Yes. Yep. Give me an investigation. You literally cannot tell. Uh, it's the strangest footprint you've ever seen. It definitely looks like uh, there's the wider section of somebody's foot on either end of this tracks. Okay. Okay. Uh, advantage. He is stunned. Hey, that block again. Notice the fire doesn't really, but or huh. 
Um, are you, I mean, might not have to burn that? I was, I was looking at the stop block. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> Been taking a couple levels of barb. Um, six. Honestly, uh, as as you kind of like leap off the wall, you kind of do a flip and you land on his shoulder and you just start hammering the back of this thing's skull. The first hit, you feel it crack. The second hit, your hand goes through it. Um, do you want to burn the key point to keep going? Yeah, as, as uh, uh, actually, it turns out he does not have vulnerability to uh, bludgeoning, but I already said he does, so I was looking at the wrong stat block. So, for now, he has, yeah, no, the, the bludgeoning was enough. Uh, as, as you slam your hand through the second time, this thing kind of, like, starts to stumble out the door, and you just, as it spins around into the street, you're, you're kind of, like, holding on to one of the horns uh, on his head. And you just ride this thing down to the ground. Uh, it, it hits the ground and doesn't even get a sound out as um, these pieces of, of bone held together through um, fiendish magic just shatter. And you're, you're left on the ground holding a horn um, while the rest of the body is just crumbled into a pile of bones. I assume Richter lets go of the spell so that, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on a moment. Uh, I need a wisdom save before you actually make any of your attacks. Sorry, Phoenix. I forgot that is a concentration spell and it is surrounding him entirely. Yeah, no, you, uh, you're you good. You ride this thing down to the ground. Everything that, happened, that I said happens, happens. And as you uh, you land on the ground, uh, I'm going to assume Richter lets go of the spell now that he can actually see you. Yeah, so you, you guys gather up the, the bones and like kind of bring them inside and try to hide them behind the busted bar at the back of the room. Uh, no. Uh, this thing is, uh, made of bone, so it's not like flesh. It's it's kind of like hitting a wall with your arrow. They'd be busted. So, what do you guys wish to do now? Who's going first? <laughs> Yeah, Wabu, are you going to continue up the stairs? No, there, there's four flows. You four floors. You're on the second floor. All right, Wabu heads up first. Are you trying to be quiet, Wabu, or are you just body dying your way up there? Uh, I mean. It's hard to be quiet when something busts through the door, but uh, given what this city is going through right now, probably not out of the ordinary to hear somebody busting it. Shit. Okay. All right, I need a marching order then. So Wabu first, who's after that? Boombreaker, are you going second last or uh, fourth? So 
So, Wabu, you begin to head up the stairs, and uh, the stairs are pretty enclosed. Uh, as you get to the top, um, realize that at first you don't see anybody. And as you crest the top, you feel a blade under your neck. Who are you, and what are you doing here? <laughs> just fucks right off i love it yeah you uh you use this teleport and basically you just kind of get sucked backwards away from the blade and you reappear at the bottom of the stairs on the first floor uh let's see uh, sue me you're next uh you can't see the man but you can see his arm standing there with a dagger where wabu was what the and his arm retracts back around the corner who are you and why are you here? Uh, you see one, like, just uh, one side of the face kind of poke out and poke back. How many of you are there? How did you know we were here? Damn it. He, he, uh, looks over, uh, or actually, I guess you can't. Uh, says, Samael, did you signal? And, uh, from around this corner, you can't see him, but you hear a, a child's voice. They, they look strong. I, I saw them come over the wall. What? You guys snuck in? Why would you come here? It's craziness. Do you not know what's happening? One at a time, slowly. You mean you're at the front? Are you heading up? As uh, you walk in, uh, the man uh, kind of grabs you and, and pulls you in deeper into the room, and you immediately look around, and you can see about nine people with bows drawn. Hot. Why do you look familiar? They they look at each Stormforged? And the child They're the the, the supers the, the the super people Really powerful. Samael, how do you know this? Posters when the war started. That that's I think that's Sulamine. And this child runs past you and goes to the top of the stairs and looks down. And and that that's Phoenix and, and Richter and I, I think his name is Spoonfucker. And 
Oh yeah, he he won't recognize uh the t uh, the last two in line. Uh, I I don't know I don't know who that that Paragon is or or that dwarf. Are wait dwarf? Are you Atlas? Oh, the uh the man at the top releases you. See means. All right, wall can come up as uh. You guys come up, uh, you see one of them kind of gently, like, they, they pull down a, a small, uh, attic staircase from the ceiling, and you hear them kind of whisper, fine, you, you come down. I think they're friends. Fifteen more people, um, slowly walk down the stairs, and you see a bunch of women, and children, and a couple of uh, frail old people. Yeah, Wabo, when you uh, dimension door to the bottom, what did you immediately do? Yeah, wa Wabu? Sorry, um, I might have had a couple drinks by this point. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Phoenix quickly comes down, um, as you're kind of creeping back up, like, guys, guys? Uh, you hear the conversation, you can't really hear exactly what's being said, but... Um, pretty soon Phoenix comes, uh, you know, back down the stairs. As the, the two of you make your way back up, um, this this small area is now very full between uh, eight eight men with uh, kind of masks pulled over their face, uh, dark paint around their eyes or blood or ash or something, keep, keeping them, you know, making them look very, would it be hard to see at night. Um, and about 15 women, children, and older folks. Plus you guys, there's almost 30 people in this room. It's it's very tight now. Uh, a couple people are kind of like sitting on the stairs up to this attic area. Well, sorry. Of course, we are rather on edge. We heard the commotion downstairs and thought maybe uh, somebody had found us, but Samuel apparently was signaling and told nobody as he side-eyes the child. Let's see. I'm going to say Sulamine. You probably have the most, uh, most knowledge of this group uh, in this matter. I would like you to give me your choice of a history, uh, perception. Yeah, I'm going to say history or perception. Oh, shit. Uh, you notice the marking on the face masks that these people are wearing. These are members of the uh, Cerberus Assembly. Um, this is basically a clandestine group um, that is normally is focused on the darker side of the Dundelian Empire. Um, 
what they are known for is basically pursuing the the end goals of the Dwendalian Empire. Um, finding them in a place like this is not really a surprise. Although the fact that they have not evacuated may be a little surprising. Uh, he says, uh, we've been held up here for about six months. Uh, we managed to infiltrate the place. We heard that as Tam was in this area and sent to assassinate him. When we got here, it was impossible to penetrate. We lost 30 people. We are one that is left. We just happened to find these people, and we've been trying to hide here and survive. We go out during the day scavenging. Fortunately, we are running low on supplies. As you look around the room, you can definitely see that um, many of the people, their their cheeks and their eyes seem to be a little sunken in. Although their clothes are baggy, really get to feel like once upon the time they were not. People are probably starving. It's not. We, uh, we lost 15 in our first uh, assault on the castle, and then they have been picking us off one by one when we go out for food. We've been losing about one a week. Monk status, baby. As uh, you guys hand out some rations, uh, each of the civilian-like people uh, each take one for themselves. And the, uh, those wearing the masks of the Cerebus Assembly seem to each take half of a ration. Thank you. Will help us greatly. So, uh, a few of the women take a, a deep swig, but uh, the service assembly people only take like a sip. And uh, the child, of course, I want some. No, they just like smack his hand away. <laughs> I mean, they'll take whatever you can give, whatever they don't eat now, they'll, they'll save for the moment. So as um says so what is it you're looking for and where do you think it is? And he uh he pulls out a a map and he kind of like or sorry, he, he points to a map of the city on the that is pinned up on the wall. Underground. He thinks for a moment. Okay. As well, uh, I don't know exactly where the entrance is, but I have heard it is in the castle, which is nearly impenetrable. Uh, there's rumors of a vault of Vecna on the grounds. City originally built by goblins. Some of them have, most of them have turned away from evil gods of old, but not all of them. Some of them still worship in secret, and there is rumors that there 
is a holding area. Uh, rumors, it's also full of deadly traps. Trigger them, there's a high chance that you are not coming back out alive. You and I are... <laughs> yes, we... You and Cerebus Assembler are not exactly very different in that our life expense, uh, expectancy is about five years after we sign up. The kid pipes up and he's like, Where? Where's Atlas and, and Ash and that spoon fucker guy? No, you're not. Ash is a Goliath. Did you just ooh ooh at a fucking child? <laughs> He's very put off by this. This is weird. I don't like this. And he goes back upstairs. The, uh, one, a couple of the service assembly guys kind of chuckle. Uh, I take it you died at some point, did you? Looking at the two of you. Looks at Wabu. And I'm guessing this one resurrected you. Well, reincarnated more than likely. Let's see. Well. Oh, wait. Has, has Rockguard fallen? Tell me, tell me what's going on out there. Like I said, we haven't left this place in six months, other than for food in the city. But you're saying that we have basically lost. Very well. I will go with you. I will help you find I've I've got more experience than you. We should leave uh leave tomorrow morning. Most of the undead rest during the night. Or or sorry, they they rest during the day. Um, at this point, it is probably about uh, fights don't take very long, but trying to navigate and not get caught. I'm going to say you guys have probably been in the city now for probably a good five hours. And you guys arrived at uh, and then took you three hours to find your way around. Yeah, you've got about two hours till maybe three. It'll take us a couple hours to find our way. But, uh, we should probably leave at sunup tomorrow. Make our way and hopefully be able to find something out where this vault might be. Uh, we do have a couple hours, though. There's a library not far from here. Maybe we can find some information. That was uh, 
that was several hours ago. By the time you get there and back, it's it's going to be like past midnight. That it would have been dark for a couple hours. So it's up to you. You may uh, attempt to do that, or you can hope for the best. I mean, you did watch the, the uh, or you did you do know that one of the skeletons knocked the other off the wall. So it is up to you. You guys may try and do that, uh, but that means you will be traveling this city for probably three or four hours after dark. Yeah, the uh as uh what what exactly was it you killed? Uh Richter can make me a arcana check. He's gonna have the most knowledge about me. Pretty sure it's some kind of bone devil. Yes, uh, we've managed to kill one of them about five months ago. Once it's dead, it's dead. If anything, they might collect the bones. If they know where the bones are. Did you hide them? That's good enough. I don't think they'll... They don't care that much about each other. They are fiends. Devils to be exact. And to kill each other as often as they... Kill anything else. Should go in a small group. Um, only the quickest and/or smartest. I wouldn't mind having a few of you wait here to protect the people in case something happens. Very well, or the other two of you, are you willing to stay here and protect the people if they need it? Appreciated. Well, if we're going to head out, we should do it now. Um, the rest of the uh, service assembly folk uh, continue to watch. You can the uh, one immediately takes up a post next to uh, the window that you guys had seen Samael um, signaling you from. Another one, each one takes a position at each window. Uh, the shutters are closed, but they are propped just ever so slightly open. And you notice, uh, the three of you that are, are there kind of notice that even when they, uh, whisper to each other or people, they never take their eyes off what's going out outside. Richter, uh, I'm going to say <clears throat> Richter will probably cast invisibility on himself. Um, just because, I mean, he's not exactly... Quietest. So he'll pop invisibility, and the other three of you are sneaky enough. Uh, well, the two of you and the guard would. Uh, right before he he leaves, or right before you all leave, pause for a moment. Uh, 
by the way, my name is, uh, Raniel. This please with me. Uh, he makes quick, uh, work, um, running through the street, uh, pausing at, at corners and, and ducking behind cover whenever he can take a look around. Uh, you notice that his footsteps make zero sound. He leads you guys through the city for about half an hour. At which point he, uh, he uses a grappling hook attached to a rope um, to latch to the library <clears throat> uh, second floor window. He pulls himself up and uh, after a moment sticks his head back out and motions for you all to come up. As you enter, yeah, <laughs> I figured you might. Um, yeah, as as you guys get in, um says now looking for information place behind that door. And he motions to a door at the at the back of the second level. Um this door is heavy looking iron. Walks over and I I lost my lock picking to about a month ago. Well, any of you are good at this, are you? All right. Um, so survival and arcana. You, you definitely open that lock. And, uh... Ripped it. <clears throat> you guys open the door. What reads? Sign above the door. Says... Authorized personnel only. Yeah. A splash of acid. You hear a click. Something above you starts to slide forward. Here, no. And uh, before you can even try to make your deck save, Randiel slams you in the back. You fly into the room. And you hear a splash behind you. Turn to look. He is already melted. Skeleton. The floor outside of this has also begun to melt. The acid is or into the first level. Uh it, it, it was it was basically like a bucket of acid. <laughs> like Yeah. <coughs> Um, so Ray Niel, who I just made that name up for, is now dead. But Richter and Phoenix, you guys are still on the outside of the room, and the floor is melting away just outside of it. What you guys want to do?
I mean, it, it's it's only about 10 feet. Yeah, Misty. All right. Yeah, no. I mean, 10 feet uh, for Richter is probably quite a bit. Yeah, Misty, that makes sense. level two spell slot so as you all begin library uh you got about uh from the time you got here you got about two hours to sundown and it took you guys half an hour to get here. so you've got about an hour and a half looking through the library Uh, yes. So what I'm going to say is the two of you, uh, Phoenix and Sulamine, are going to get uh, one roll of uh, investigation and he's going to get two in a time period. <clears throat> God damn, Phoenix! Holy fuck, boys! Sulamine, you find um, a book about war tactics. Oh no, you're you're each finding something. You're finding a book on war tactics, and some as soon as you see this this book, it kind of I don't know something in your mind's eye just starts to itch, and one of the things you end up reading is. One thing about war tactics is a lot of times when it seems like something big is happening, the real goal, what they're really trying to do is something off in the middle of nowhere that nobody notices is the real thing that's going on. Yeah. But on a massive scale like this, start to think that maybe though they're going for Rexentrum, they've got something more nefarious, something more important to their plan is happening elsewhere. Probably in an area where they've made it look like they have no control yet. Um, sorry, what, what exactly was the, the real reason you guys came here again? Right. Right. So, Phoenix, you find a book about Vecna, specifically. Now, you remember that, uh, that Raniel had said that it, it was rumored that it was a vault of Vecna. You start reading up on on Vecna using. Um, <clears throat> you learn that this being, this now deity, was once uh, a wizard turned dark. Um, oh, sorry. Hey, okay. add. <coughs> this uh, archmage, archmage, Vecna uh, achieved lichdom, and eventually amassed followers and undead forces. Eventually, uh, disappeared into the Shadowfell, where they believe that eventually, Vecna eventually just became a deity instead of a regular lich. This, uh, 
this deity is often considered the patron saint, for lack of a better word, of dark and coveted secrets. If there is a vault here, it probably contains a wealth of information, dark magics, magic items, and spells. Else do you find out about Vecna? <clears throat> As you continue to read. Realize that a long time ago, this area was the biggest collection of his followers outside of the Shadowfell. More than likely, it wasn't Vecna himself that actually created the vault, but rather a cult of fanatics. Probably, if there is, all those secrets down there, was likely created um, by his followers and collection that may or may not be down there, would have been amassed by his followers, um, probably also as a temple. However, Richter finds a book pretty quickly and he begins to read. I need Richter to make me an intelligence save, please. Nope, too late. It's a fail. I'm just kidding. Yeah, he uh he passes it. You you see him um at one point kind of like grip his head and uh like he's in pain and his his nose starts to um he's not gonna he's only gonna take half of this. He's gonna take thirty five psychic damage. As his node starts to bleed, it quickly becomes a pore. And he's like, he's holding his head with one hand and, and trying to cover his nose with the other. But as the blood seeps into the pages, see it absorb it. <clears throat> and as it does so, the book begins to shine. Uh, behind the inked letters and words, symbols, Shining red. And as the, the blood stops to pouring, kind of looks, oh. Oh, this is in. Says, in case anything happens, when we get there, there's a password. I can't quite make it out a, a moment. Oh, I see. So it seems to gain entrance to this vault when we find the actual entrance. 
each of us needs to whisper our deepest, darkest secret. Gain entry. The only way we get in. He, he looks up at uh, the two of you, so you guys have a deep, dark secret. He looks at Phoenix. Well, you better think of one. We're going to need it. He, uh, he continues to read the book, however. As he does so, um, once again, intelligence save, please. That is a fail. Is he still alive? Or, I mean, conscious? Okay. God damn, how much, is, how much HP does he have for a wizard? Apparently. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, again, his, his nose begins to bleed profusely. Uh, he is... Well, we're not in combat. Give me a number. What's he at? Out of what? <laughs> now, hold on. Um... He continued to read, which is what got him in that position anyways. He might as well figure out what it says before. Just puts it away. Um, it says, The entrance is a riddle. And he writes it down. Let's see. What is the riddle? Make a rip up off the top of my head. Oh, I know. No, I don't. Give me a second. You know what? He's going to write it down. I'm going to have to figure out what the riddle is. But he says, I I think I found sort of the answer to where the entrance is. Uh, it, it, it's a riddle we have to solve. But he, he kind of looks uh, out the window and sees where the sun is. He's like, we, we should get going. We, we have to go before it gets dark. And uh, he says, Br bring the books with you. Uh, he stuffs his in his bag, and in fact, he runs back, and he just, like, takes a quick look over the shelf, and he grabs four more books and puts them into his bag of holding. And you guys make your way back out. You guys head back to the, uh, the small building, or the, sorry, not small building, the four-story building. Uh, you guys make your way inside. You did see a couple things on the way here, but uh, it wasn't anything big. Just a couple of small skeleton patrols. You guys were able to hide from pretty easily. As you guys arrive back, you head up the stairs. Um, as soon as they hear footsteps coming, like you, you guys get to the top and 
uh, the arrows are pointed again. As soon as they realize it's you, they put them away. Did you find... Wait. Where's Raniel? Uh, you see them all, uh, all of the Cerebus Assembly people uh, kind of lower their head and they whisper something and almost simultaneously um, give some sort of a hand signal. Their eyes closed. The good leader. And one of them looks over at uh, at one of the ones who's been uh, guarding one of the windows. Well, Sergeant, you're next. Oh boy, what I always wanted to do was lead a doomed mission. Well, I guess I'm the one going with you to lead you to the castle tonight. I assume that's where the vault is, no? Richter says, possibly, I, I think so. I, I've got to decipher this, figure out what it is. Excellent. Okay, well... I assume we're going to go tomorrow morning, no? Very well. As the sun is setting. As uh, from now until dawn, no lights. No speaking. No moving. Everybody needs to remain completely still. Silent. I hope you all can sleep for the next 12 hours. He looks at each of you as you remain silent and says, kind of nods and with good. And with that, you see many of the uh, women and children and elderly folk. Um, Pull out uh, small bed rolls. Sit in, ch in a few of the chairs that are around. Begin to try to sleep. Would any of you like to try and stay up and take some watch? Or are you all just going to crash for the next 12 hours? Okay. Give me, give me your order. <laughs> yeah, Richter is definitely going to need uh help. That work. All right. The UH take uh, two hour watches. Um, Ulamine. First off, give me a perception. As the sun sets completely, but he starts to try to sleep. I mean, you sit on one. The sun goes down, still slightly. Sounds be pick up from. Or the sun turns into a sliver on the horizon. Louder it. As the sun completely slips away, way to darkness. The only light being 
fire in the sky. King eight. Sounds horrible, laughing, fighting, tearing through buildings. Every once in a while, uh, somebody who was hiding, quite obviously. Notice one of the children, his mother's arms. Mother sleeping, all but, uh, albeit uh, not very. Child's eyes wide, makes eye contact. And as you try, you can see tears kind of welling up in his eyes. Been here long enough, though. Cries silently. Finally falls asleep. As you look back towards the window, flying creature flies merely ten feet past, ten feet away from you, flying past. Wing beats. Obviously waking up a few before they drift back off to sleep. This sort of event can the entirety of your 12 hours, or your two hours of watch. As your watch ends, stand fully to breaker, probably sleeping with hands on his titties, ever so silently, I attempt to wake him up. How do you do so? <laughs> From Breaker, you awake to Lamine saying, What exactly again? Fire watch, bitch. <laughs> Take the chair by the window. About the same time, uh, What's up? Uh, it just changed your body. It does not change your mental faculties or your memory. Uh-huh. I'm scared to wonder why. I mean, yeah, I would I I feel like in combat you would uh you'd probably handle yourself somewhat the same. Um take maybe a little while to get you your um to uh leperine body. Yeah. Yes. I mean, let, imagine being like, you know, being you and then getting your brain traded into, I don't know. You ever seen um us?
Or no, get out. Sorry, it was get out. No, you haven't? It's a shame, it was a good movie. Um, but yeah, I guess if you don't know, I guess that uh uh correlation wouldn't really make any sense to you. Um Yeah, basically the, the sensations, the, the nerve endings uh, of a another creature would not be the same as to what. <clears throat> yeah, you uh, you take your watch. A perception. Yes, please. Well, perspective as fuck today. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm making this all up on the spot. I don't know what anybody... Something that pops into my head. <laughs> I mean, normally, uh, normally past 10 o'clock is when player roles fall into shithole. You know what I mean? There's usually a, a time where player roles start to fail and the DM roles pick off. I've noticed that, like, all the fucking time. <laughs> um, I'm going to say a few blocks away and hear guttural laughter like several creatures probably quite large their laughs begin to echo be a building go up in flames. Hear the screams, people. As they leap from the eighth story, one after another, building. It would make sense that this is probably another uh, another hideout, much like the one you have now. But unfortunately for them, they were. People fall. Be a few of them that leap before they can even drop past the next. Something shoots up. Grabs them or yanking them. Screams continue for moments before it's all silent. Shadows dance across the rooftops as he forms. I only see the silhouettes due to fire, but shadows stretch across the blocks. Thing you're dark day to be watch ends. Time to wake up. Feet. How would you like to do?
Give me a perception. <clears throat> this is the one time critting would not be a good idea. Fortunately. You cannot block out sounds of the night. The screeching. The screams now and then. The claws and talons. Bones. Being dragged across stone. Sound of a creature walking by the base of the building. Ripping meat from bone. I would like you to make me a sanity save. Give me a D100. Uh, that does not work with sanity. It's not uh, one of your regular. Sanity is outside of any of the... Outside of your regular saves. No, not this one. You cannot. Any of your other regular saves, strength, dex, con, etc., etc., yes. Andy is not one of them. I want the other five of you to roll me a E20. Lowest. <laughs> yes, she does. Phoenix, you, you try to retreat into your mind using her training as a... Eventually, you find yourself walk, rocking back and forth. Hands over your ears. Rock back and forth. As you open your eyes, you are surrounded by enemies. Sleeping enemies. Monster. Beep at the first one. Into pound. Give me a full round of attacks on it. <clears throat> Use that flurry. Ash, you awake as Phoenix is beating you out the head. He's on top of you. Just slam, slam. The room erupts. In oh, everybody is silent. Everybody's con um. Several of the Cerebus Assembly run to grab you, Phoenix. Uh, make a dexterity save. Uh, disadvantage. Like six, seven of them. Is Eldritch Claw a tattoo? Yes, it is damage. Um, 
the first attack, by the way, uh, she's incapacitated as she's sleeping. So the first attack is a technically a crit. So give me another 4d8. So, Ash, you take all of that damage. Um, however, the Cerebus Assembly uh, gets uh, jumps up and immediately grabs you, and they 14, that's a fail. So they are going to pin you to the ground feet. Uh, they don't beat you down, but they grab you and just, like, each one of them on a leg and, uh, and, and an arm. Um, a couple of them kind of, like, get on your torso and, like, keep you down. And last one, Puts a hand over your keep you quiet. Um, the rest of you, Stormford, wake up. The children are scared. The adults are that are not fighters are also, scared. and they kind of like quietly as they can and slowly back up away from this um, fight that came out. And what did the rest of you do? Gonna grin at Phoenix. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, let's see. How long does it last? Uh, give me a D10, Phoenix. Two minutes uh so after about 10 minutes you 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 kind of you kind of come to and you realize uh what's happening it start to relax um and whisper it's okay you're not the first are you good and he slowly takes your hand or his hand away from your mouth One of them kind of like crawls over to Ash very quietly and says, Are you good? Um, one of the guards kind of stands up and like kind of tries to get everybody's attention without saying anything and kind of puts a hand up and pushes it forward twice, say, you know, to say it's all good. And he puts his hand, um, goes down and Kind of signaling that everybody can go back to sleep. Uh, who is up next? Um, Wabu, since you uh, would have woken up with that. We're good to take your watch, sir. Uh, Phoenix, it, it does take you a, a little bit to get back to sleep, but you do get back to sleep. Um, you are able to regain your... Wabu. And to take your watch. Give me a perception, too. Don't roll a crit! 32. Alright. Oh, damn, that was close to a crit. Um... Same kind of thing, other than the losing your mind for a moment. Um, you're able to hear basically the same kind of thing. But being out in the wild with animals, the sound of flesh tearing from bone is something you are used to. Um, still a little daunting, but you're able to. You're able to kind of convince yourself that you're in the wild. 
with some animal friends. Circle of life. Nature. Uh, as you hear um, laughter. Kind of fool your own brain in feeling that, <clears throat> excuse me, that this, these sounds are just a forest at night. Uh, the, the bone and, and uh, rotten flesh slapping against the stone walkways through. The that's, that's just some nocturnal friends looking for the uh the once in a while scream pain is a wolf taking down a deer it gets a little hard to treat yourself every now and then some sounds you cannot turn into a natural especially when you happen to making that but your watch passes by and now it's time to work out the ash once again I'd like to do I would also like you to make me a stealth on your way over to you are you are quite heavy, are you not? Hey man, dude dude's got like a two hundred pound shell. Yeah, your footsteps don't. Your footsteps don't. Don't need that stealth. I'll give you advantage on it, though. It's not your, your foot that's making the sound, if there's a sound. You manage to do it silently. You, uh, you, you start to step on one spot on the floor. And as you place your foot down before you put your weight on it, you feel like it has a little give. Great right, if you continue on in your weight on that foot, the wood is going. You shift your direction slightly. You're able to get to ash without. Wake up, ash gently. Gently, uh, or sorry, ash, having just been woken up a couple hours earlier by uh, getting beaten about the face. How do you respond to getting woke up, woken up again? Roll me a perception. You sit on your watch. You still hear the sounds, but nothing is overly loud. Overly. No, you've only got about three and a half hours before sun up, so the city's starting to quiet a little. However, you happen to hear <laughs> uh, you do happen to hear somebody running kind of shifts. Up a little higher in the window, 
look down and you and armor. A chainmail with a sword running stops and he turns his face towards your building doesn't look up starts backing up to the wall of the building for a moment we're unable however quickly a horde about 20 10 zombies coming from one direction the other he's now pinned nowhere to run against a fight slashing back and forth. drops two from over here over there and as he goes to swing again one of them catches his arm tries to swing his shield uh to get it off his arm fortunately Another zombie grabs that arm. Uh, he quickly goes down under the weight, screaming. Everybody kind of wakes up. And uh, he, quite obviously, uh, a couple of the women and children start to tear up. Uh, the mothers covering the ear. They all cry silently. Closing their eyes, squinting, trying, trying not to hear. Not long before uh, more zombies. Probably another good 15 or 20. Um, as this uh, man starts to go silent, uh, they continue there, and you can be chomping and the ripping of flesh. The, the sound of teeth on metal as they try and bite through the chain mail. It takes this man a few minutes to dive to the amount of armor. I mean, uh, a good portion of them do. Yes. A good portion of them move on. However, several of them stay trying to finish their meal. Try and bite through the, through the snapping of them. Uh, finally, you can hear flesh start to play. But your watch has ended. So the, not all of the zombies have left. Well, it turns out I actually missed to turn order. <laughs> yeah, so y'all gonna just let, uh, you're gonna just let Richter and Spoon Breaker. I mean, technically, you, you got your long rest in anyways. It took two hours, right? Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong turn order I'm looking for. Yeah, Richter was the last one. That's correct. Yeah, I, I was looking at the raw. I was looking at the marching order, not the the rest order. Yeah, I'm gonna say if you want to roll some hit dice, you can.
And as the second two hours um, finishes up, the zombies have marched on, and the sun is beginning to rise. See the uh, Cerberus assembly people um, slowly go around and gently wake, including the rest of you. Uh, Richter also would have told you guys what he had found, uh, that he found a riddle. So he's going to spend the first hour when you guys wake up doing the, um, um, his, actually, you know what? He would have stayed up a couple hours working on the riddle. So the first hour when he wakes up, you know, you can just roll, um, just hit hit dice, it'll roll it all automatically, right? Well, you are a barbarian, it's a, it's yeah, it's e12, but just hit. Oh, are, that's what it does when you hit hit dice, like the the word hit dice. Oh, well, that's weird. That's not how it usually works, most people, anyway. Okay, doesn't matter. Um. Richter would have spent the first couple hours while you guys were doing watches, uh, working on the riddle, trying to figure out, um, exactly, like, translating the riddle. And when he, when you guys all wake up, he will spend an hour prepping his spells, which I'm gonna let Mr. Ryan do that when he gets, uh, back for next week. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's uh he's probably fucking out cold too. Run daylight. What languages do you speak? Fuck off, really? Goddamn monks. Alright, uh, well, I mean, that's gonna have to wait. I will let you guys know, um, by next session, what the riddle is, and you guys can discuss it in-game and try and figure it out. But, uh, in the meantime, uh, you guys are able to spend your first hour prepping spells for those of you who need to. So make sure those are all prepped and ready to go for next session. I've already moved the calendar forward. And as soon as Richter has his spells uh, chosen, basically he's going to come to you guys and be like, you know, this is the riddle. He's also going to make sure that you all know that you need to be able to give a deep, dark secret, something bad that you've done that you wouldn't want anybody to know to get into this vault. So, your homework, ladies and gentlemen. I need one very short story. It can just be a few sentences, but give me a few details. Uh, it If you've got one of those characters that doesn't have a, you know, backstory where they've done something bad, fucking make something up. I don't care. But it does have to be something that your character would... Be honest about. And with that, we are going to end a session. I'm going to outro the stream and I'll be back in a moment. Well, thank you everybody for coming who decided to hang out. Uh, we do have uh, our next session will be two weeks from today. Uh, we are going to be picking that up. Uh, but I do have tomorrow some uh, X Defiant. If you're into shooters with a few of my friends here, uh, one, two, three of them are here. Uh, and the other one is actually uh, will be here. He's the one who normally plays Richter. Um, other than that, I have uh, probably be upgrading my computer this week. I've already got the parts. I got to do that. And then on Friday, I should be back. 
Um, I'm hoping I will get at least a day to edit some videos. I've got like almost a month worth of videos. I've got to go through, make some clips, upload them to my YouTube and my TikTok. So we will definitely see you back here um, tomorrow night. And then after that, it is Friday. Uh, at the end of tomorrow's session, I am doing my giveaway, though. So if you want to be here for that, um, definitely tune in. And we will see you then. So remember, everybody. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. There we go. So remember, everybody. Be savage, go home. Pieces.